I know firsthand the importance of nourishing our bodies, especially during pregnancy. That's why I want to share Ritual and their Essential for Women prenatal with you. This is the prenatal I took during my pregnancy after researching a ton of different options. You see, Ritual is all about transparency, which is something that I truly love. They make sure that 100% of their ingredients are made traceable, so you know exactly what you're putting into your body. And that is important when you're growing a tiny human. Plus, they're gluten and major allergen-free and totally vegan. But Ritual is not just about great products. They're also a certified B Corp. That means they care about more than just profits and are fully committed to the health of people and our planet. What's really cool is that Ritual offers a subscription-based service with free shipping, control over your delivery date, and savings when you bundle. They're so confident in their products that they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. The Essential for Women Prenatal is a prenatal multivitamin that's packed with clinically studied nutrients that are essential for both you and your baby. Think Nature Identical Choline, clinically studied folate, and 350 milligrams of sustainably sourced omega-3 DHA. These citrus or mint essence capsules are designed for optimal nutrient absorption and are gentle on your stomach too. Now for the best part, Ritual is offering Mommy Liberner's podcast listeners a special discount. Visit ritual.com slash mommy labor nurse and 40% off your first month of ritual will be applied at checkout. That's ritual.com slash mommy labor nurse for 40% off your first month. You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, where you'll gain the tools, knowledge, and confidence you need to erase the unknowns, feel in control, and have an even better birth, no matter how you deliver. My name is Liesl Teen, mom of two, practicing labor and delivery nurse, and your host. From over eight years and counting of working at the bedside, I know that knowledge is the key to an even better birth. So tune in each week to learn about all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum from me, a labor and delivery nurse that's seen it all. And now let's get into this week's episode. Happy Monday. So this week on the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, we are talking all about heartburn. So many expectant mothers experience heartburn during pregnancy, which is a fiery sensation in your chest that is simply no fun. I know it very well. I had bad heartburn, not so much with my first one, but definitely with my second one. Today, we will explore what heartburn is, why it's so common during pregnancy, and most importantly, we'll go through 14, 14 effective home remedies to help you feel a bit better. If you're looking for more symptom type episodes, check out episode 195, which is all about itching during pregnancy, and then go way back to episode five about breech babies, round ligament pain, and more. But for now, let's get into this week's episode. What are we talking about today? It is heartburn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people experience heartburn during pregnancy. So if you haven't, heartburn is just that burning sensation that rises from your stomach and it spreads towards your chest and your throat. And it's just, it's very uncomfortable. It occurs when your stomach acid kind of flows back into your esophagus, causing irritation and discomfort. You know, you got your esophagus and you got your diaphragm kind of at the bottom. And sometimes in pregnancy, it kind of relaxes a little bit so you can get some of that acid to come back up and cause quite a bit of discomfort. You've also got a baby that's growing down there and can kind of put some pressure also on that diaphragm and that can cause heartburn as well. So pregnant women are more susceptible to heartburn because of the hormone progesterone. Like I said, this hormone allows your body to relax and loosen, but not necessarily in the pelvic region, right? It also will cause the valve in your esophagus, that diaphragm, that keeps stomach acid down to loosen, making heartburn more prevalent. So between this loosened valve and your growing baby, that makes your stomach volume a lot smaller, right? Stomach acid just gets pushed up more and more frequently. And this is usually what happens. The larger that you get, the more frequent or more intense your heartburn can get. Now, why is it so common during pregnancy? So number one, like I just said, hormonal changes 
pregnancy hormones, particularly that progesterone, relax those muscles in your body, including that lower esophageal sphincter, which normally prevents stomach acid from flowing back into the esophagus. Your growing uterus, like I've also said, so as your uterus expands to accommodate your baby, it exerts pressure, right, on that stomach, which causes your stomach acid to just get out of there and to kind of flow back into the esophagus. You also tend to have slower digestion during pregnancy. Those hormones, that progesterone can cause uh, some constipation, some slowing down of everything moving, you know, throughout the body which leads to longer periods of time for your stomach acid to kind of just sit in there, okay? So it's not only more likely to go up, it's just it's in there more often. And also dietary changes, right? So pregnancy cravings, aversions might lead you to be eating some foods maybe that you weren't eating before or you're not eating foods that maybe could have helped keep heartburn at bay, Just your eating patterns might be a little bit different. So we are going to go over 14 home remedies for heartburn during pregnancy. And then I asked ChatGP to write me a funny story about a pregnant lady with heartburn. So we're going to do that at the end. Okay. It's going to be a quick little episode. You know, there's not a whole lot to say about heartburn, but I wanted to give you guys as many tips, you know, as I could collect, right? Because heartburn sucks. (laughs) All right, so number one is eat smaller, frequent meals. Yeah, a lot of people know this, but makes sense too, right? Your stomach is not only getting smaller and smaller in the quantity, right? There, Your baby's growing and putting pressure on that stomach, so there's just less room in there to be eating large meals. So if you are eating a large meal, there's just, it's a lot more crowded in there, so that stomach acid just can kind of, shoot back up, right? So we want to be eating smaller, more frequent meals. Always kind of have a little, you know, snack in your bag or, you know, just eating instead of breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, wake up, eat breakfast. Then two hours later, eat a little snack. Two hours later, eat lunch. Two hours later, eat another little snack. Two hours later, eat dinner. You know, you you get the idea. Usually instead of three meals, I want you to be eating like six-ish meals, okay? And just the quantities will be smaller, obviously. So that's a good thing. Number one, if you're struggling with heartburn, make sure you switch up your times of eating because that does actually make a big difference. Number two, avoid trigger foods. So sometimes it's a little bit harder than, you know, it sounds because you have to either just know offhand what kind of triggers your heartburn or if you don't, you have to kind of keep a little journal and and figure out, you know, oh, okay, I had heartburn after I ate hot Cheetos. I wouldn't eat hot Cheetos if you're pregnant, even though they're really good. (laughs) Um, But you'll probably figure it out fairly easily if you just start paying attention. And sometimes that's the hard part is like, you're like, oh, I have heartburn all the time. And it just happens all, you know, after everything that I eat, which may be true. Okay. But if you start just kind of keeping track of when your heartburn is worse versus is better. You can kind of get an idea of like, oh, wait a second, I actually react really bad to dairy or the hot Cheetos or, you know, whatever it may be. A lot of times it's spicy food, greasy food, acidic foods, like even, you know, oranges, anything acidic, chocolate, right? Chocolate has a lot of acid in it, caffeine, these types of things, okay? So we want to try and avoid those. Or if you are going to eat them, eat them in small quantities or eat them kind of earlier in the day and not close to bed because because the next tip is stay upright after eating. Yeah. So obviously we think about gravity, right? If you're eating something, regardless of if it's triggering your heartburn or not, if then you lay down, that acid's just going to be right there pushing up against that sphincter and be able to cause that heartburn a lot easier. So we recommend remain upright for at least one to two hours after meals to allow that gravity to help keep your stomach acid down and prevent that reflux. This also goes for when you're sleeping. So if you can, try to elevate your head while you're sleeping, even if it's just like an extra pillow or two. You don't have to have a fancy, you know, 
Tempur-Pedic bed where it moves or you don't have to necessarily sleep in an armchair, even though pregnant women definitely do that because of heartburn. Sometimes you just need an extra pillow. And unfortunately, sometimes that acid reflux really is worse at night because as you can imagine, you're laying down and it just, gravity, it sucks. (laughs) Are you wondering what you can be doing in your first trimester of pregnancy? There is actually more than you think. Inside of my free first trimester prep pack, you will get a first trimester checklist to stay on top of all your early pregnancy tasks with a handy list of don't forgets. (laughs) You will get a how to prepare for prenatal appointments little sheet, which is a printable guide to help you learn what to bring, what to expect, and what questions to ask. And you'll get a printable weekly pregnancy journal. You can use these keepsake worthy pages to document your week by week symptoms, cravings, best moments, and more. There is one actually for every single week. Yay. So to start your pregnancy on the right track, head on over to mommylabornurse.com slash first trimester. That's mommylabornurse.com slash F-I-R-S-T trimester to access your free first trimester prep pack today. Number five is chew gum. Yeah. So chewing sugarless gum after meals can stimulate that saliva production, which helps neutralize the stomach acid. Okay. It doesn't like take it away, but it can just, you know, even if you are having some of that stomach acid come back up, it's not as intense. Number six, sip ginger tea. Yeah. So ginger, most of us know this, but ginger is really great for morning sickness, right? Because it just has that natural anti-inflammatory property in it. But it's not only good for morning sickness, it can also just kind of soothe your stomach and help heartburn. So whether it's tea, whether it's just, you know, plain ginger, but incorporating ginger just into your diet in some way can kind of maintain your heartburn. (laughs) Number seven, try papaya enzymes. Yeah, a lot of people don't know what these are. And I actually had to look these up before I uh, started talking. (laughs) So I didn't know what this was at all. I had not tried this with either, either of my boys. But papaya enzymes are available in these little chewable tablets. And they just kind of aid in digestion similarly to uh, ginger. And they help reduce heartburn. You can get them on Amazon. Number eight, this is an obvious, but we want to make sure we're staying hydrated, right? So going along with eating more frequently and smaller meals, drinking plenty of water between your meals to stay hydrated, but avoiding large amounts during your meals will help prevent that excessive stomach distension. So just like the meals, you want to eat more frequent meals and you want to drink just as much water, but kind of do it sparingly. We don't want to be chugging water, right? Number nine, wear loose clothing. Yeah. A lot of these same tips are just for a general pregnancy discomfort too, right? We say, hey, wear loose clothing if you are having issues with swelling in pregnancy. But when I say wear loose clothing, I'm talking about kind of up top, right? So if you're wearing like a tighter shirt or a constricting piece of clothing, even like your bra, oh, sometimes just not wearing a bra, it's okay. You're pregnant. You can do whatever you want. I know sometimes it's real uncomfortable to not wear a bra, but sometimes those bras, it's like right in that spot that it hits that heartburn and it can be very uncomfortable. So whether it's just changing out your bras, wearing a sports bra or one that's just a little bit looser fitting can really help. Number 10, apple cider vinegar. Yeah, bleh, I almost threw up in my mouth because it just bleh, can't do it. Uh-uh. <laughs> and although it might seem counterintuitive, right, some women actually find relief by mixing one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with water and sipping it before meals. Yeah, it's icky. If you can do it, it does actually really help. Apple cider vinegar has so many amazing uh, properties and just benefits for your body. And the acidity of apple cider vinegar can help to balance your stomach acid levels out really, really well. So if you can hop on that train, that apple cider vinegar train and go and do it, uh, 
yeah, you can do it. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. It's too yucky for me. But yeah, apple cider vinegar can really help. Number 11 is coconut water. Yeah, coconut water is a natural hydrating drink that can soothe the digestive system, kind of just calm it down. Everybody, think about coconut water. We're on the the beach. (laughs) It's soothing for your stomach. And again, some people cannot stand coconut water. I'm not a big fan unless I'm mixing it with something. Yeah, I can't just drink straight coconut water, but some people love it. So try it out. Number 12, milk. Yeah. So (laughs) unless you have issues with dairy, right? Sipping a glass of cold milk, oh, it feels so good. (laughs) Just helps to neutralize that stomach acid and provide temporary relief. Okay. It's not going to really get rid of the sores, right? But God, sometimes just drinking some milk if you have really bad heartburn is just enough to get you through (laughs) until those tums, you know, kick in. (laughs) And Tums aren't on here, but obviously uh, medications, that's an extra one too in here that that you can do is just play around with your different antacids that you do. So some people, Tums really works well. Alka-Seltzer kind of just, you know, depends on what works well for you. Number 13, yogurt. Yeah, kind of similar to milk, right? But consuming plain probiotic rich yogurt, you can get your probiotics in there too. That can do a similar thing to milk and just, you know, it's a little bit thicker, right? But it's a little bit better than milk because it also has those probiotics in it and it helps to promote a healthy gut and aid digestion, which can potentially alleviate your heartburn. And number 14, can't leave this one out here, but consult your healthcare provider, right? If your heartburn is really, really horrible, despite trying all of these things and you feel like you're just doing everything and you're, you know, taking 15 tums a day, if you have really severe symptoms, consult your healthcare provider for further evaluation and personalized guidance. There might be something else going on. Probably not. It's probably just that you're pregnant, you have a ginormous belly, but you never know. Your provider could say, oh, you're taking this one medication and the side effect is really, really bad heartburn, maybe we can change it to this medication or, oh, I've found, you know, that this actually really, really helps. So they can just investigate further on a more personal level. All right, the sound of that heartbeat means it's time for this week's segment of Birth It Up Babies. This one says, hi, I just wanted to drop you a message regarding your courses. We took the C-section course because our little one was breached, so we had an elective section. I've followed you for a while, learning from your Instagram podcast, and the course was super helpful. My husband took the course with me, and he really valued the information that he took from it. Our experience was slightly different as we were based in the UK, but the information from your course was still super helpful and helped us have a good experience with the birth of our little girl as we go through postpartum. Oh, that's so sweet. If you want to have an even better birth, just like this mama, head on over to mommylabornurse.com slash courses to learn more about our three online on-demand birth classes. So yeah, those are my 14 tips that you can try. Heartburn is not fun. Like I said, I had it real bad with my second one. But we can't end this episode without a nice little story from Chat GPT. Okay. I said, Chat GPT, can you tell me a funny short story about a pregnant lady with heartburn? Okay. Are you ready? <clears throat> Once upon a time, in a quiet little town, there lived a pregnant lady named Lucy. Lucy was in the later stages of her pregnancy and was eagerly awaiting the arrival of her little bundle of joy. However, she had a peculiar problem that seemed to be growing alongside her baby bump, relentless heartburn. Let's hear why it's so peculiar, Lucy. Lucy had tried every remedy under the sun to get rid of her heartburn. She drank milk like a cow. That's inaccurate because cows don't drink milk. She ate more antacids than you'd find in a pharmacy and even slept upright in a reclining chair, but nothing seemed to work. Her heartburn persisted and it was turning her into a comical character in her own life. Poor Lucy. One sunny afternoon, Lucy decided to visit her favorite local cafe, the Spicy Bean. Oh boy. (laughs) She craved a delicious iced coffee to cool off despite the nagging heartburn. Mm, Yum. 
The cafe was known for its spicy drinks and was a hub for the town's intellectuals and artists. Ooh, okay. Lucy waddled her way to the counter, her baby bump leading the way. She ordered her iced coffee and decided to add a slice of their famous jalapeno cheesecake. Oh no, Lucy. Girl, you should know better. (laughs) She figured she might as well embrace the fire. Heartburn can be darned. (laughs) Okay. All right. Hey, she knew. As she sat down at her usual corner table, Lucy noticed that her favorite poet, Samuel, was sitting at a nearby table, scribbling furiously in his notebook. Samuel was known for his long, flowing hair and eccentric style. He looked up from his notebook and noticed Lucy, her face flushed, clutching her chest. Lucy, my dear, you look like you're carrying a volcano in your belly, Samuel remarked with a sly smile. Lucy, exasperated, replied, Oh, Samuel, this is heartburn. It became my constant companion. I can't shake it. Samuel leaned forward, a glint in his eye. You know, Lucy, some say that great art is born from suffering. Maybe your heartburn is the muse you've been waiting for. Oh, what does that mean? Lucy raised an eyebrow, puzzled by Samuel's suggestion, but she decided to play along. All right, Samuel, what do you propose? With a flourish, Samuel took a spoonful of Lucy's jalapeno cheesecake and declared, we shall create a masterpiece together. You'll eat this spicy cheesecake and I will write a poem inspired by your fiery heartburn. Oh, I love it. Lucy chuckled at the absurdity of it all, but agreed. She took a bite of the cheesecake and Samuel began to write. Lucy's face turned even redder and her eyes watered from the spicy treat, but she kept eating as Samuel composed lines that compared her heartburn to the burning passions of love. Uh Uh-oh, Samuel. Well, I guess it didn't say that Lucy has a husband or a partner, so who knows, but you know she's pregnant. Don't get too excited, Samuel. As Lucy finished her cheesecake and Samuel concluded his poem, the cafe erupted into laughter and applause. They had unwittingly created an unforgettable, comical masterpiece. Lucy's heartburn was still there, but for the first time in a long time, she couldn't help but laugh at it. Oh, see, it didn't help at all, but at least she could laugh at her misery. And Samuel, well, he had material for his next poetry reading. Oh, see, they didn't give me the poem. Hold on. We got to ask Chat GPT what the poem is. Okay, let me finish. Then we can ask Chat GPT what the actual poem is. From that day forward, Lucy embraced her heartburn with humor and grace, and she found herself with a newfound friend in the quirky poet Samuel. And so, in a town filled with odd characters and odder stories, Lucy and her heartburn became one of the most memorable tales filled with laughter, spice, and the magic of unexpected friendships. Oh, love it. Oh, we got to do that. Isn't that like uh, poetry? Don't you snap? <laughs> okay, let's say, hey, chat GPT, what was Samuel's poem? Can you write it? Let's see. Oh, ChatGP said, certainly, here's Samuel's whimsical poem inspired by Lucy's heartburn. Ooh, it's long. Well, it's not that long. Okay. In a town of tales, both strange and bright, where passions burned like stars at night, there lived a lady, Lucy was her name, with a fiery heartburn, she became our flame. Her belly swelled with life's sweet art, a tiny firebrand from the very start. But within her chest, a different spark did glow, a heartburn like a volcano's fiery flow. She'd drink her milk and chew her mint, but that heartburn, it left no hint. Of slowing down or taking flight, it turned as bright as day turned night. One sunny day at the spicy bean, Lucy sat down with a gleam unseen, and in her hand, a cheesecake spicy and hot, she dared to challenge her heartburn's fiery lot. Her face grew red, her eyes did tear, yet she continued without fear. For Samuel the poet, with flowing hair, had a notion beyond compare. Embrace the fire, let it burn, he said. In its flames, let's craft instead. A tale of heartburn, spice and cheer, a comical masterpiece for all to hear. And so they laughed and ate with zest. Lucy's heartburn put to the test, a friendship born in spicy delight, that curious and unexpected night. In that cozy cafe where they did dine, Lucy's heartburn became divine. A muse for Samuel's poetic dream, in the town where things are not as they seem. The end. (laughs) Lovely. I love it. 
give give you some snaps there, Samuel. <laughs> oh, heartburn. Okay, guys. Even though, you know, very common, uncomfortable symptom that many moms experience. Hopefully, with some of these things that we went over, some of these 14 things, you can find some relief. Remember, pregnancy, very unique experience. And what works for one mom might not necessarily work for you. So it's just about trying a bunch of stuff until you can find, you know, whatever works for you. And remember, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out to your provider for help if you are really struggling with your heartburn. All right, next week on the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, we are going to be talking about quickening. Do you know what quickening is? Well, you're going to find out next week. It's uh, something to do with movement. Yeah, baby kicks. Quickening is just a fancy way of saying baby kicks. So we're going to be talking all about that next week. It's another solo episode. So yeah, see you guys next week. Already feeling a little more confident about pregnancy, birth, and newborn life? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can continue to erase the unknowns and never miss an episode. And if you're looking for even more, Instagram is definitely where I hang out the most. Come join our community of more than a half a million moms for birth education, tips, and solidarity. You can find me at mommy.labornurse. Check out today's show notes and a searchable library of every Mommy Labor Nurse podcast episode at mommylabornurse.com slash podcast. And while you're there, be sure to head to the blog to learn about our online birth classes too. See you next week. And remember, you can have an even better birth no matter how you deliver.